Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney and today I'm so excited because it is the first DIY mystery box challenge of 2022. This is the third year I've been hosting this challenge and I'm super excited. This is the rundown of what the challenge is. Each time there are a group of YouTubers, I've got awesome regulars who stay with me, others that pop in and out, and then new faces each time as well. Every box is themed, so for this time the theme was dollar, dollar anything. So we could purchase some Dollar General, Dollar Tree, the dollar spot at Target, anything that kind of gives off that whole dollar vibe. Inside the box, there are also two wrapped challenge items. These are items that we must use and that are probably considered a little tricky to DIY with. We can use anything from our stash. And then the final thing about the box is that there's always a twist each time that changes every single time. So who did I send my box to? I sent it to Auntie Cuckoo and I got my box from Ashley Lauren and she wrapped it all pretty. There will be a playlist down in the description box that will take you in order so that the whole thing makes sense so you've got an awesome weekend of viewing all these awesome boxes. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the box and then let's see what I got. Okay took all the pretty wrapping paper off here we go let's open it up. I always set the challenge item side and save them. Oh my gosh look how cute she even wrapped those. Two and one. Okay, oh, there's a card. Okay, let's see. Open the card really quickly. Here we go. Hey, Courtney, thank you so much for asking me to participate in this mystery box challenge go around. I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what you do with everything in this box. I obviously went with the spring theme, oh, LL. Oh, and I'm dying to see what you do with those challenge items. Uh-oh, happy crafting, Ash. How sweet, I love, I save all of these cards. I absolutely love that. Okay, so the box is very pretty inside, so. We've got some florals. We've got some roses. Oh, and I, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> white roses. Um, these little lavender, white lavender. Oh, that's pretty. And then some more roses. I'll have to put this one back on. All right, I'm gonna set them over here. All right, I can do florals, no problem. All right. Two little wooden birdhouses. There we go. This is wrapped in tissue, hold on. Oh, this is cute. A phone ring with a strap. It's a little uh, coffee cup. That's cute. Okay. Hmm. Ooh, that's pretty. What is this? Okay. Uh, let's see. It is wired. Okay. I should know what this is. It's wired ribbon. <laughs> oh, you can. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can untwist. I know. Okay. Yes. I've worked with this before. This is a very pretty color. So it's like, uh, not raffia, but you can, you know, unfold it and it, it kind of like crepe paper, I guess is the best way to describe it. So that's a pretty color. Dude, she sent me some good stuff. Moss. All right, can't go wrong with some good old Dollar Tree reindeer moss. Some laser cutouts. Gorgeous. Love those. All right. Burlap ribbon. <laughs> and some classic flower bracelets. All right, okay. There's some challenging things in here. A little dragonfly with a bell. There we go. She sent a very good box. This is really good, Ashley. Wood planks. I'm sure do the burlap ribbon already. All right, a little lever sign with the arrow. Another good base here, be mine sign. Okay, she was very nice to me, like super nice. Jewels and gems, little butterflies. Okay, this one might be tricky. Jewels and gems, hmm. I don't know, I'm nervous about these challenge items. A frame, and then a, let's see what else she got. A piece on earth, another little picture. And a little gnome, wooden gnome. He's cute, got little stars on his hat. All right, my twist is in here. And then this is wrapped, so I'm guessing that maybe it's breakable. Let's see. Uh, all right. Ah, flower pots. All right, flower pots, flower pots. I can do that. Three set of flower pots. All right, the twist. Let me get this out of the way. So the twist was I created a form and it had three broad categories and we had to put one word in each one and we have to work those into our DIYs. So the three categories were color, material and embellishment, okay? So for color, she chose gold, for material, wood, 
and embellishment gems. Okay, so that's kind of what the form was that I made and what it looked like and what she wrote down. So we can do it all in one DIY, we can spread it out, but this is our twist. We have to work these elements into it. Now the moment we've been waiting for, let's find out if she was nice with these challenge items. They're definitely wrapped really pretty, which makes me nervous because I wonder if she's buttering me up here. All right. Okay, I've been known to send, well, people think I haven't sent very nice items, but what is it? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. It's a, <laughs> a Lego plate base or building blocks, make it blocks, sorry, not Lego. And some pieces. <laughs> okay. I get what you're laying down here. Okay, okay. Oh man, I've, I haven't had to work with those at all in any of the challenges. All right, this is number two. Oh no, no! Ashley, what? Oh, girl, okay. Oh y'all, come on, what? Oh my gosh, what? Okay, hold on. Oh man, seriously? Okay, ready? <laughs> it's a doll head with the br <laughs> with a brush. What? Okay, this doll's gonna give me nightmares. There she is. Okay, Ashley. <laughs> Challenge accepted. What? I said make one of them kind of hard and she did do that. All right, I'm gonna think on this for a couple days, come back and whip out some DIYs. For this DIY, I will be starting with the Christmas sign that was sent to me. I started by painting over the design with white paint, but after doing that, I realized I actually wanted to use scrapbook paper. So you have two options here. You could paint it and then continue on with this DIY or cover it with a cute Easter scrapbook paper and to attach it, I just used a glue stick. Once the scrapbook paper was down and I did get that from Hobby Lobby in their five season pack, I grabbed some orange ribbon and I wanted to make a carrot shape on my sign. So I took my lighter and went ahead and just sealed the end of it so it wouldn't fray. And then at this point, I just zigzagged it back and forth to kind of get a carrot shape. Once I realized that this would work, I tacked it down with a little bit of hot glue. To finish off the top of my carrot, I trimmed it and then folded it underneath so that I could tack it down to my sign. And then I was ready to add greenery. Now, those of you who've been with me for a while know one of my favorite hacks about how to get greenery for cheap. If you're new, what I love to do is when Hobby Lobby has, especially this type of greenery, on sale for 50% off. It's the long strip of garland. I buy it, it's the $9.99, and I'm telling you, it lasts forever. I've been working on this one garland for at least a year and a half. So I'm gonna just tack these down with a little bit of hot glue, and then I will be ready to add my letters. I wanted to add the word spring down the side of my sign. These stickers came from Dollar Tree and I like them because they're a little bit raised up. So I started pulling all the letters off thinking, oh yeah, I've got all the letters to spell spring. Well, I didn't have an N. So then I thought, okay, I can make one. So I messed around trying to cut an M and add another piece here and it looked terrible. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna look in one place. I went to the bucket that all my stickers were in and sure enough, a bunch of these stickers had fallen off and I found an actual N. And so once I had all my letters, I painted them with some cotton candy colored paint and then I attached them to my sign.
For this DIY, I grabbed the pack of wooden slate pieces that Ashley sent me and I started by giving them a very light sanding. Once that was finished, I grabbed my rotary tool and I decided I wanted to make a garland out of this. So I drilled two small holes at the top of each of these pieces. I originally did all six pieces, but I only ended up needing five of them. I debated a little bit about how I wanted these pieces to look. I wasn't sure if I wanted to stain them brown, if I wanted to paint them, but I did want to stain them. And to achieve a pink stain, I took some more of that cotton candy colored paint by Deco Art, added some water and brushed that all over the pieces of wood. Now I will say that anything that I use today, I will definitely link down below. I am a big, <laughs> craft tool gadget girl. So you're probably, you're going to see me use a lot of different things and everything is always linked down below in my description box in case you're wondering, but if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment and let me know. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all nice and painted and let them dry. Once my wood pieces were completely dry, I took some sandpaper and just gave them each a very light sanding. And then to put my letters on here, I decided to use some stencils. These came from Michael's quite a while ago, and I'm just gonna use a stencil brush and some white paint and stencil on one coat of paint onto the wooden pieces. To wrap up this garland, I had one of these carrot garlands that came from Dollar Tree and it was perfect because in between each carrot, I could fit one of these wooden letters. So I took some twine, this was just very thin pieces of twine and I just tied each of my wooden pieces directly to the carrot garland and then this project was all finished. For this DIY, I'm using some of the flowers, gems, and pots that Ashley sent me. So the DIY before, I hit the twist, which was to use wood. This one is hitting the next two and the final two, gems and the color gold. I started by taking one of these mini clay pots from Dollar Tree and painting them with some lavender paint. While the purple pot was drying, I sprayed all of my butterflies with some of this Krylon metallic gold spray paint and let them dry. Then I was ready to take a piece of floral foam and stick it inside of my purple pot and trim down some of these flowers that she sent me to stick inside of the pot. For the butterflies, I wanted it to make like they make it look like they were flying around my little flower arrangement. So I started with some of this gold wire that I had in my stash and I grabbed one of the butterflies, put some hot glue down and stuck the wire down, then added a little bit more hot glue and pressed another butterfly to the other side. So that way it was a two sided butterfly and you couldn't see the wire. I made three of these so that I could stick them inside of my pot and on the base of the wire, I kind of just folded it over and made it a little bit thicker so that when it goes into the foam, it was a little bit sturdier inside of the foam. And I placed all three of my butterflies into the floral arrangement. I also added like a little loop to the wire to make it look like it was fluttering about. And then the final step was to take some white rocks that I had in my stash and I just filled in the base of the pot with those. And then this little thing is ready to be displayed for spring.
The bird houses along with this framed metal picture frame here are going to be the stars of this DIY. My first step here was to take these bird houses and break them down. I needed to get the roofs off along with the bases off. The roofs came off pretty easily. I just took my heat gun and I heated up the glue and was able to pop those off pretty easily. The base was not as easy. I had to kind of heat the glue, use an X-Acto knife. There was a little bit more effort, but I did did manage to get them off. Now, I needed these to be flat. So as you can see, when you put the house here, there's a little bit of a wood border on the base. I needed the back side of the houses to be completely flat so that I could get these attached to a wall. So I marked off where I needed to trim the back piece of the board and I used my miter shears to get those cut. For one of the roofs on the house, I decided to use the metal from the frame. So I broke down the frame and then I cut it with my tin snips. Now I did not use gloves. I would highly recommend using some gloves because this metal got really sharp. I was just very, very careful, but definitely use some gloves. I just took the piece and kind of loosely measured so that it would cover the top of the wooden house. For the other house, I'm gonna be using one of the wood roofs that was originally on these little birdhouses, but I didn't like how much it was overhanging, so I marked them and then again, used my miter shears to trim the extra wood off. You definitely could do whatever color scheme you wanted, but I was gonna keep this a little bit neutral. So for the two base pieces, along with one of the wooden roofs, I painted it with some brown wax. And then the two houses I painted white. Now I will say this, I actually made a, another springtime really fun little key holder that's gonna be coming up in a future video. So if you're gonna wanna see this concept with some color, stay tuned because it's coming in another video. To assemble these back together, I started by taking some DAP, which is a very strong, it's kind of like super glue adhesive to attach the house to the base. I also took some hot glue and on the inside just lined it to kind of set it and secure it. Now, here's the thing. You need to add another piece of wood inside. So I took some tower blocks and I just cut it in half with my miter shears. And I, again, using some type of super glue, DAP, whatever, stronghold glue, E6000, something like that. You wanna attach the small block to the center inside of the house. And the reason being is that the base of this is going to need to hold some weight. This is going to be a key holder. And when you screw your wooden hook into it, you need a nice thick piece of wood for that to screw in so that the thing doesn't fall apart. Once the tower blocks were completely dried inside, I took my rotary tool again, started a little hole right in the center of the base so that I could screw my hooks into the center of the base of each of the houses. To finish up these houses, I just needed to glue down the roofs. Once that was done on one of the houses, I wanted to add the word home. So I had this sticker pack that came from Hobby Lobby and I spelled out the word home. If you're going to use stickers, make sure you put a nice coat of Mod Podge on there to seal it down. The other one, I wanted to use an old key, but I literally cleaned out my junk drawer last week with our kitchen renovation. I was going to paint it and make it antique looking and actually stick it and glue it down in the house. So I just found a sticker of a key and for now I put that on there, but I'll change it out once I get some sort of actual key to glue down. But again, so many options for this. You could do a his and hers, you could do many colors, but a fun way to hang your keys, to get them on the wall, just use some of those 3M picture hanger, at least a five pounder so that it'll hold the keys and you're good to go. For this DIY, I'm using the wooden gnome, the moss, 
one of the challenge items, the doll head, along with the bracelets. But something goes terribly long with the doll head. Just stay tuned and I have to do a 180 and completely change my plan. But let's start off with the gnome. I cut off the little twine part at the top and then wanted to pop off this 3D star because it wasn't really going with my whole spring vibe that I wanted this gnome to have. Once I got that popped off, I kind of damaged it a little bit. So I had to sand it just a little bit. And then I picked up three different paint colors. One, this is natural buff for his nose. For his beard, I am going to give it a coat of green paint. It's the color clover. And then for the hat and the body, I use again the cotton candy and all three of these are from Deco Art. Right here, you'll see that his hat is pink, but I do, again, another completely 180 on that. So just stay tuned for that. You don't really need to paint his hat pink. I'm going to start by attaching the moss to the beard. So that is why I went ahead and painted it green just in case I didn't get full coverage, but I'm just using hot glue. I'm going to smash this down on there and then trim it up with some scissors. All right, guys, I'm about to grab the doll head. Now, especially on these mystery box challenges, I like to put in a little bit of real audio because especially on the challenge items, I just want to share kind of what was going through my head. So here you go, a few small clips of what I was saying while I was trying to deal with this doll head. Okay, this is gonna be something else. Okay. I'm a Barbie killer. <laughs> Things I do for this mystery box. Small children, I should have put a disclaimer on this. Small children, don't watch. I feel like Hannibal Lecter. I swear, I'm not a mean lady. Or scary lady, although this really does make me look a little psycho. Plan B here. We're gonna do a... <laughs> now I'm gonna scalp her. This is just getting worse. I feel like I should be watching like... Texas Chainsaw Massacre right now. Okay. At this point, you're probably wondering, Courtney, what the heck are you trying to do? That is a good question because I don't really know what I was trying to do, but my thought was to take the hair, braid it, paint it, use it as an embellishment on the base of the hat. Of course, one braid wasn't enough, so I tried to make it longer, stick it down there, and I just wasn't liking the vibe. Now, had I thought ahead, I could have just turned this very easily into a girl gnome and used the braids as braids and had the hair coming out of the gnome hat and all that good stuff, but I was already committed with this little bushy bearded boy gnome and so I decided okay the braids just not gonna work and that's fine so I moved on my focus to the hat now I could still see the outline of the star and I wanted to fill that in so I took some Dollar Tree caulk and I went ahead and spread it over there and then I decided you know I really don't want the hat to be pink I want it to look like concrete <laughs> so I took the caulk and I spread it all over the hat and then took a pastry, a pastry scraper that came from Dollar Tree I scraped down it to make some lines and then I let that dry really good Once the hat was all dry, I was ready to start painting it. One of my favorite hacks um, when painting is to use oral swabs. You can get a huge pack of these from Amazon. It's cheap. You can just throw them away and be done with it. I grabbed three different shades of gray. I did Steel by Waverly. I did Elephant by Waverly. And then one called Linen by Deco Art. And I just began to stamp the colors, starting with the medium shade, the Steel, and just stamping it until I got the look that I wanted on the hat. The last thing to finish off this gnome was to add a little embellishment to it. So I took the pack of laser cutouts that she got me and painted the little bumblebee with yellow and black and white. And then to attach it to the gnome, I simply used some hot glue, glued it directly onto his hat, and then this gnome is ready to be displayed. Sliding into this DIY, here is that challenge item again. 
After much thinking and a, a little more butchering of the doll head, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna use the base of this doll head and that's what I decided to do. So I ripped, well, I cut off the head, ripped off the base, and then the bracelets that I was gonna um, use on the gnome, I decided I'm gonna make a little planter. So I've got the base of the head. I took the bracelets and I took a piece of cardboard and traced the inside of one of the flowers so that I could make a base that would fit snugly into one of the bracelets. And then I used some DAP to glue these together and right on top of each other to make it nice and sturdy. The last step to assembly was to take the bracelets and attach them to the base, let that dry. Again, I used DAP. I took it outside and spray painted it with some vintage teal spray paint by Rust-Oleum. And then I grabbed the burlap that was in my box. The base had some, I don't know, best way to describe it were like little holes and I didn't really like being able to see those. So I decided to cut the wire part off from the burlap and wrap that around the holes on the base of this and just attach it with some hot glue. To finish off this planner, I inserted a piece of green floral foam and added some moss to the top of that that I had in my stash. Then I grabbed the white roses that Ashley sent me, trimmed them down and put them into my arrangement. And then this was finished. It is perfect size for a tear tray or even a bookshelf. This DIY is using up that Be Mine sign along with the phone ring strap holder thing I'm a bobber. I started by popping off the Be Mine letters, trying to get off as much as I can. I wanted the little leather piece from the phone strap because I'm gonna turn this into a little breakfast tray. And once I got the letters off of the sign, I found some cute scrapbook paper. It came in a pack from Hobby Lobby, the Five Seasons pack took some Mod Podge, put it down, put my paper down, and then also sealed the top of the scrapbook paper. To attach the leather handles, I am gonna use some strong adhesive glue. Again, I'm using the DAP, but again, whatever you have that will actually work, just in case somebody happens to actually pick it up by the handles, I didn't want them to go flying off. The last thing I did was that little charm had a cute little coffee cup that I cut off of the charm and hot glued that to the front of the tray. And then this is the perfect size for a coffee cup and some type of small baked good. For this DIY, I will be using the love meter sign along with this decorative wrap. To start, I decided I wanted to make this into a planter. So I'm going to cut a piece of this and start by securing it to the bottom of this sign. Now I need to make sure that when I do secure it, that I leave some space that I don't pull it taut against the sign. Otherwise I won't be able to stick florals inside of it. So once I get this ready to go, I'm just going to take some hot glue and secure it to the back side of the sign and then pull it loosely around the edges and secure it with some more hot glue. And then I will cut one more piece and do the same for the top piece. To get this to the point that I could hang it up, I take my rotary tool, or again, you could take your Dremel, and I drill, just kind of start two holes at the top and use some eye hooks and screw those in, and then tie a piece of twine on there. And then I grabbed the florals, the pinkish colored roses that Ashley sent me, and I put them inside of this little planner, and it was ready to be hung up. I'm 
tackling that second challenge item, the Make It Blocks in this DIY, I started by grabbing the base plate and painting it with some Folk Art paint in the color Clover. Now, what I decided to do was to go ahead and make a small fairy garden. I've never made one before. And so I started by taking some of these mini popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart. I grabbed three of them out along with one of the terracotta pots that Ashley had sent me in that three pack. And I started by trimming the popsicle sticks, just three of them down with my miter shears, two of them, trimming them a little bit smaller than the middle piece. And then I attached them together with some hot glue and stained them with some brown paint. With the wooden door attached to the pot, I was ready to embellish around that. So I grabbed some Dollar Tree rocks that I had in my stash and I hot glued them, just leaving a little bit of space between each one around the door. Then I went back in with some moss and I filled in those little gaps that I had made between the rocks. I also needed to use up this dragonfly, so I removed the bell from it and set it aside. Then taking the pot, I put some hot glue on the bottom of it and hot glued it directly to the base. I took one of the Lego building blocks and stuck it down on the Lego piece and attached some moss to it to make kind of a little moss mound. And then I also attached moss to the green bell from the dragonfly and attached that to the green base. I did go in with a little bit of moss and hot glue that also around the door on the pot. Then taking more of those Dollar Tree rocks, I hot glued a little pile of them next to the pot. And then some of the white rocks that I used in an earlier DIY, I had more of those and I made a walkway and I just hot glued those directly down there. Then to get some kind of sand in there, I took Mod Podge and I spread it out between the little rock walkway and I added Dollar Tree sand to the Mod Podge. I did go in and add a little bit of moss to the top of the pot and then this fairy garden was ready to go. Dollar Tree has all their little fairy stuff out. I, like I said, this was my first attempt at making one. I think it turned out pretty good. Let me know down below what you think. And there you have it, the first DIY mystery box of 2022 in the books. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite projects. Also, let me know this. If you were given those two challenge items, the doll head and the magic building blocks, what would you have made? I would love to read what you would have come up with. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. There is a playlist down below, so don't forget to check that out and watch all the awesome videos. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!